In English, we say we procrastinate. In poetry, we say why do we postpone ourselves? Why do we delay? Our hearts feel our faith, but our minds say nay. Why do we wait day after day, putting off dreams for another day? Life ticks on while we delay. I like my routine, we often say. What if we dared to truly live? Not drive the route of Google Maps, but walk the road of our hearts. Perhaps will we postpone or will we start to live the truth that is in our hearts? The choice is yours to postpone no more, to start the life your heart longs for. Why do you postpone yourself? It's funny because I was actually postponing recording this video. I was thinking, what will I say? But let's explore the question together. Why do you postpone yourself in the first place? Why is it such a popular question? I believe it is for my famous philosopher, Marcus Aurelius, if I'm not mistaken, or Seneca. It doesn't matter that much. However, the question seems to be really relevant to a lot of people. Is it interesting to you because you know you are delaying yourself? Before we continue, I think it is wise to find out what it really means. What does it mean to delay yourself? to postpone yourself could it be that you are not doing things you actually think you want to do or the opposite that you are doing things you do not want to do which could be the case for most people so could it be that the things you're currently doing feel like effort they do not feel effortless work takes up the majority of our lives but what if it is actually seen as work to you or you could even say studying right doesn't really matter anything you're, that you are doing on a day-to-day -day basis if that is seen as effort then what does this do this leaves you with a negative feeling when you are doing it. And maybe with the idea that you are postponing yourself. This is maybe why people are so relieved when it's finally weekend. Because they can do things in the weekend that do not feel like effort. In fact, the opposite. So could it be that we as humans strive to escape from negative feelings? And that you believe that the solution is in maybe another job, maybe your own company, or maybe a different business, or maybe selling your company, or maybe retiring, or maybe investing so you don't have to work anymore. I think all of these cases they leave you with a lot of time to most people so then the question becomes what are you going to do with all that time until you are going to could it be that there is conflict that there's a lot of conflict that you already know what you actually want to do in your heart but that your brain your mind is telling you the opposite or something very different that one that your heart is telling you stop doing that but that your mind is telling you not to it's interesting because a lot of the times it seems like is the end chapter it seems obvious when i say that but it seems to be the end chapter in maybe any question that i ask inside the book of questions do we lack the courage to actually do that thing we want to do for such a long time or do we lack the courage to stop doing the thing we know we really dislike doing seems to be money is a big block for most people it seems like the truth really here is that you are comfortable right now doesn't feel like it what i try to say is you're comfortable enough or it's not bad enough yet humans can take a lot of pain Physical pain, yes, but I mean more so mental pain. And that the truth is that your desire to escape from what you're currently doing, or your desire to actually start doing that thing, writing the song, painting the thing, whatever it is, that that desire isn't great enough. And that the other people around you, or even are not around you anymore, just the past conditioning causes you to stay where you are, which makes you feel like you're postponing yourself. I've said it before, but people have a great, great impact on you. And with great, I don't mean positive. I also don't mean negative. What are the consequences of the people around you? And even the ones that are not physically around you, but virtually around you. What are the consequences? I'm not thinking about good or bad, just what happens when you listen to others. And not listening in a way where you accept their words, but more so passively hearing what they say. What are the consequences of that? Well, for most people, I don't want to say everyone, but you could almost say so. It is further away from the truth. A lot of beliefs created that way. Hearing a lot of opinions of others increases. I would say involuntary thought, which could be like, ah, oh, there is a thought inside of you. I want to quit my job, for example. What well, that is the truth. That's how you feel because it is coming from your heart, let's say. Then all the involuntary thoughts could be the people around you. Well, what if you quit your job and then you can't find a new one? Uh, maybe you have to get out of your house. Uh, you can't drive this nice car, whatever it is. Especially the latter ones that have nothing to do with survival, but with the beliefs imposed on you by others that having a nice car is important. If we get back to the practical stuff or not, maybe it all sounds very vague to you, which I can understand. By the way, I'm Jordan, 23 years old, did over four and a half million dollars in revenue, hired over 50 people, started making videos on YouTube in 2012. And right now, the most important thing in my life isn't those things, it is finding the truth in everything. So what is the truth here? That perhaps life is to you a ratio between how much joy you feel in a day versus how much pain or negative emotion you feel 
in that day and that you only change when the pain is no longer bearable and that that could be the moment when you stop postponing yourself and that there is nothing to do that there is no how to stop postponing myself but that it is about seeing that that you are comfortable enough of where you are right now and that it isn't bad although you do see it that way probably and that maybe right now inside here there's a reaction which maybe says something like that is unacceptable maybe i'm not sure but maybe it's time for you to look into this to see the truth in your own situation and if you do not because a lot of people don't it requires a lot of attention which feels like effort to most to really look in, into your own situation life if you don't do that that basically proves my point that you simply do not want it enough and with it i mean the stoppage of postponing yourself whatever that means to you and that that is the answer to the question why do you postpone yourself because it's okay to you and that isn't bad and that until you are ready to look for the truth in your life you will feel that way but it's a very complex thing there is a lot of complexity which means there needs to be a great desire and maybe there is a small candle inside of you that light it up it could grow into a big flame that's a person i'm talking and already the one who has that flame if that's you you may watch this video next talk soon